Hi, in this latest video we will take a look at the new structural features of Revit 2025.3. There are four new areas of interest which are load cases and complinations, exporting rebar sets to IFC, the ability to duplicate layers in compound structures and a new add-ins manager. Let's start by looking at the modernised load cases dialog. So to do this we'll select the Analyse tab and in the Structural Analytical Model panel, we'll go into the Settings and we'll select Load Cases and Complinations. So here we are in the Load Cases and Complinations dialog. The first thing you'll notice here is this has a new modernised look and feel. We can collapse or expand each area of the dialog. So you can see here that I can click on the little uh, claps in arrows here to show or hide Load Cases, Load Complinations and also the new area which is Advanced Configurations. So let's look at the advanced configurations area in here. So the first thing we can do here is select a region or a country code. So in this case, we'll go ahead and select Great Britain. And then we can choose our design code. So uh, from the UK, we'll choose the um, Euro code, uh, which is B in here. You can then see that we have our various different load natures. Now notice here that we've got live loads now according to residential, which is category A, or office, for example, which is category B. So what I'm going to do here is now create a live load that's going to use our new category B. So we can add a load case in here. We can double click to rename this. So this will be live load one. And of course, in the load nature pull down menu, we can then go ahead and select our nature. So in this case, like we've said, we've got our user defined uh, load natures here, or we can go ahead and select live category B. So I'm sure we'll see as time goes on that the structural analysis capabilities of Revit would increase and of course this new load cases and combinations dialog will support those new features as they come through into Revit. Let's also look at what happens if we import a robot model into our Revit model. So I'll just cancel out of this dialog here and we'll switch across back into robot. And you can see here I've got a really simple model set up. So I've got one load in here, so this is a live load added onto the model itself. And the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and set up some code combinations. So here we'll go ahead and use full automatic combinations. And you can see here that we're going to generate 29 uh, combinations. So we'll click OK and we'll then go ahead and run the calculations. So the calculations have now been run, and if I actually go up and now take a look at these loads, we can see now all of the loads created. Let's now import this into our Revit model. So we'll go back into Revit here. On the Analyze tab, we'll go ahead and select Robot Structural Analysis, and of course we want to use the link here. And now what I want to do is update the model. And of course here I can use direct integration as I have Robot already open. So you can now see that uh, Revit's creating these load cases and obviously generating the members as well. Okay, we won't look at the report and we can now see that we have our model. So looking into this now, if we go back to the Analyze tab and we go back to our uh, Structural Analytical Model settings and look at load cases and combinations, in the dialog now, we can now see all of the load combinations have come through from Robot. Okay, great. Now the next thing to look at here is going to be the export to IFC. So let's go ahead and have a look at the settings. So I'll go to the file tab and we'll go ahead and use export and we'll select IFC. Of course in here we can choose our export setup. So I've got my own one in here and we'll go ahead and modify the setup. So looking onto the advanced tab of the modify setup dialog, you can now see that we have this new feature to allow us to export bars in uniform rebar sets or separate entities. So in this case now, if I wanted all the bars to behave as they would have done in older releases of Revit, I could now check this box and each bar in the rebar set would be a separate element in the IFC file. But of course, I think most of us will want that uh, switched off so that when we export our IFC out, we have one element, but we can then see the quantity of bars inside. And I've already actually uh, wrote out something to Navisworks, again, just a nice simple model. So I'll bring this across onto this screen. And of course, this is now using our uh, new function of being able to export out rebar sets. And what we'll do here is we'll take a look at the properties over here. And you can see I've now got this rebar set tab. And of course, in this case, I've got the quantity. 
And of course, selecting the other rebar sets here, you can then see we've got those again grouped. Okay, and we've got the quantities. So that's a nice new improvement. Okay, let's go back into Revit here. And what we'll do is we'll now have a look at the uh, small improvement, really, of being able to copy and duplicate layers. So what do we mean by this? Well, obviously in Revit, we have things like walls and floors. And if I go to, for example, a floor in here, and we then go into the Edit Type Properties, in the Type Properties dialog, of course, we can edit the construction and the structure. And in the Edit Assembly dialog, you'll, of course, be able to add and remove new layers and so forth. So in here, if I insert a new layer in here, I can obviously give this a, a finish, perhaps, in here. We could obviously give it a, a layer material and a thickness. And we'll then move this up. And of course, what we can now do is duplicate this layer. So it's quite handy if you've got things like sandwich panels or you've got like a finish at the top and the bottom that are exactly the same. So this might be useful for walls if you're creating like a, a concrete panel on either side with insulation in the middle. And then what we can do is we can choose duplicate. And of course, you can now see I have an exact copy of that layer. So that's a small improvement, but can be quite useful when setting up these assemblies. Finally here, we'll uh, cancel out this. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll now have a look at the last tool, which is an add-ins manager. Now to have a look at this, we can go to the manage tab, and you'll now notice on the extensions panel, we have a new icon here for add-ins manager. Looking into this, you will now notice that we can actually see all of our add-ins in here, and of course, if we want to run up Revit without any add-ons, I can just simply go ahead and say, right, well, let's disable all of those add-ins. Or we can be a bit selective and disable the ones we don't actually want to use. Now, you'll notice here I have uh, Navigate installed on my machine and I have Accelerate. I also have Structure and Rebar. And notice here that I can actually group those. So we can actually take the manifest file and we can join various different manifest files together to create a top level one. So here you can see I've got one called Navigate for Symmetry and underneath that I then have Accelerate, Rebar and Structure. Another nice thing here is you can also see that we are given the loading time for these add-ins as well. This could be quite useful if you want to sort of diagnose issues and problems with Revit. You could actually disable all of the add-ins. You could obviously then click Apply, OK, close down Revit and then restart it. And of course, then it will start up without any add-ins loaded. OK, so there's some of the new features of Revit 2025.3. Hope you found that useful and catch you soon.